I want to talk to you about the Subhub. Uh, hopefully it's arrived now and you can look at it. And uh, it's really easy to work with, but it is a little bit weird to think about. So uh, I'll try to explain a little bit. So when you get it, what you'll want to do is uh, open it up. You'll need a small Phillips screwdriver, a big one. It's a pretty tiny screw, you can see. And when you open it up, you'll see this and you'll see this notice. Um, read that notice. Uh, I tried uh, sealing this and it just doesn't work. So what you need to do is be sure and install this uh, in some waterproof container that I'll talk about here in a minute. But all you gotta do is pull out these two tabs. If they don't pull out right, then uh, you can do that. And I'll just show you now, putting these batteries in is a little tricky because they're very tight. Um, the way I found that's easiest is to put them in like this and then push down in the middle. Very easy. Okay, once you got that going, you can put the cover back on. Uh, you don't want to over tighten it because you'll strip out the screws. But uh, get that like that. Okay, now you can put it inside uh, a Ziploc bag, that'd work. Uh, but what I found is the best is this guy. Uh, it's really nice, it's made by Lacrosse. Uh, available on Amazon and the bottom just comes off and this guy fits perfectly inside and what that'll do is one you can put it out and you know no one will see it and know what it is it's a solar shield for uh, the lacrosse temperature probe and it's got a little hook that you can hook it to a tree you can hook it to your hive um, anything like that uh, that works really nice Another one is this AccuRite one, uh, which is also okay. You can see it, uh, you can sort of squeeze it in there. You might have to uh, put something to make sure it doesn't fall out like that. Uh, but any kind of uh, rain shield like that will be fine. So once you have it running, you're gonna wanna see how far you can see this guy from. Uh, me testing it out here on the street, I could see it well over a thousand feet. Um, I could keep getting data about 1,500 feet away. So that covers a lot of situations. Uh, what Theo suggested, and I thought it was a really good idea, is put this where you think you're going to put your cell phone inside and then go out to your apiary uh, with your apiary app running. And you'll see this, uh, the 52, in my case 520100 you'll see it come up on your screen and it will be uh, right at the top of the apiary app uh, it shows what the signal strength is from it and then you can move around your apiary to see you know where the best location for putting this is by seeing how strong it is for the phone okay what this does is it listens it wakes up for 20 seconds once every 10 minutes. During that 20 seconds, it listens to every brood minder that it can hear advertising. Now they only advertise once every five seconds or once every second, but it's listening that whole 20 seconds. So it's likely to get uh, several advertisements from every device. Uh, and it can deal with, we've, we've run it with 100 devices here. Uh, so we think most cases it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, now you can put multiples of these out there also if you have hives strung out over a long ways You could put one at each end of your uh, String of hives or if you have a remote hives out somewhere they all Work in what we call a star network uh, So that star network wherever your real hub is and that hub can be a, a Cell hub or a Wi-Fi hub or it can be the apiary app in hub mode Wherever that is, it is talking one-to-one -one with these subhubs out there. The other thing you can do uh, with your subhub is you can, once it's running and everything's working fine, you can go and put your other devices in battery saver mode. So what's battery saver mode? It is, it turns off the advertising from the devices 
So the advertising is the little ping that your broodminder puts out every five seconds for T2s and uh, THs and every second for uh, Ws. But it puts out this advertising pulse once every five seconds so that your cell phone can see it. Uh, it's very short, but that is the major energy consumer for your broodminder device. Uh, it could run practically forever if it wasn't trying to uh, put out these advertisements. So what we decided was if you have a hub and you're looking at your temperature devices once an hour, there's no reason for it to advertise the whole hour. So we have them advertise 10 minutes and that way we know that the hub is going to pick up um, at least once an hour data from your T, T2, let's say. And then the T2 is quiet for 50 minutes of the hour and that saves that battery. The downside is that you can't go out and read it with your cell phone all the time. You can read your hub, your sub hub, and the sub hub's going to keep advertising that data all hour. So you'll be able to see it and the hub app will be able to see it and you'll be able to see it from your house, but it won't be look seeing the data from the broodminder device, it'll be seeing the data from the hub that makes the batteries last five years, so we think it's worth it.